unlike other uh, disinfectants on the market, we manage to uh, disassemble our pathogens that we are listed to kill. And, and the way we do it is amazing because that same chemistry that's in that bottle of analyte D is the same chemistry that we have in our white blood cells, the neutrophils. And uh, this is a process that's been perfected over, you know, you know, tens of thousands of years. And it's worked so well for us because um, the fact that we are here on the planet right now is testament to how uh, well this works because our ancestors all survived either the Spanish flu or the Black Death or some other pandemic, and we survived. And the only reason we survived was the fact that our immune system was able to overcome it. And, and the way our immune system overcame it is the same chemistry that we have in our Analyte D bottle. Analyte D works for a two-prong attack. We have the water that's in the bottle. Uh, this is not just ordinary water. This is highly oxygenated water. Uh, in chemistry, we uh, measure the quality of the water on a scale that's called ORP, which means it's oxidative reductive potential. And the simple uh, explanation of that is how many electrons is this water going to pull out of something? You know, that's that's oxidation and we are an oxidizer so the world health organization says that if you have an orp of 650 you can call that water sterile which means that there's no living organisms in it and this is as you know a, a beautifully pure pristine water sterile water the water that's in our analyte d product is greater than 900 and you know i think when it comes out of the machine i've registered it at 950 and after it sits for about a week it's about a thousand so i mean be on the safe side we're going to say it's greater than 900. remember 650 means sterile so this 900 means that that's how much oxygen is in it and it's also the same measure for how many millivolts that are in it. So think of 900 millivolts in the water. Okay, this in itself, if you just had this high ORP water, you could sterilize your drinking water with it. Uh, the World Health Organization says at 650, if you put the bacterium E. coli in it, it dies instantly. So here we have this much higher grade of water, and it in itself is germicidal. Then add to it the second prong of this attack, which is the hypochlorous acid. And hypochlorous acid belongs to a group of chemical compounds that are known as reactive oxygen species. And there's several reactive oxygen species. You know, there's hydrogen peroxide and nitric oxide. Uh, but Hypochlorous acid is the most reactive of all of these compounds, and it's an uh, oxidizer as well, which means that it pulls electrons out too because it's oxidizing uh, whatever, it up, whatever it is that it's coming in contact with. So follow me with this visual. I have a six-year-old, so I'm really good at this one. So if you're familiar with the kids game Jenga, it's little square blocks and you stack them up. So think of that stack of wooden blocks as whatever pathogen that you want to. Uh, for the sake of argument, let's say it's uh, H1N1, you know, the, the swine flu, the influenza A. So you stack up a block and you say, okay, this is a virus. So the first thing that happens is you have this highly oxidized water come up and it starts pulling uh, blocks out of the Jenga tower, okay? So each one of those blocks represents an electron. And every time you pull an electron out of an atom, you destabilize it. Uh, it becomes 
weak. It wobbles. It wants to recombine with other chemicals so it stabilizes. But this oxygenated water keeps pulling these blocks out very quickly. And then the second prong of attack comes, and it's the hypochlorous acid. So the hypochlorous acid looks at this Jenga tower with this bunch of blocks already out, and this hypochlorous acid immediately turns into a raging six-year-old that comes over and just smashes it and blows it all away. I have a six-year-old. And that's exactly what happens. That's oxidation. And we oxidize things so completely that uh, you can never reconstitute that organism back into that same organism, no better than you could reconstitute a log that has burnt to ash in a fireplace. You could try all day with all the skills and all the money that you could muster, but that cup of ash is never gonna turn into a log. And what we end up with when we finish oxidizing our pathogen is essentially cellular ash. We have reduced the compounds and the atoms, the molecules uh, that make up that virus or that pathogen into their simplest, most stable components, and that's all there is. There's no uh, nuclear material. You cannot, there's no DNA to replicate. There's no RNA to reassemble the proteins. There's no cell wall. There's nothing left. And so that's why our uh, Analyte D product is so amazing, because other products that are on the market, other hospital-grade uh, disinfectants, they don't do that. And that's why in our hospitals, we have such a high amount of hospital-acquired infections. And uh, if you want to get the big word for that, that's called nososomial infections. And that's why Analyte D is going to, uh, you know, well, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Well, that's, that's how Analyte D is going to fix that problem. Because when you expose any bacteria or virus to our product, uh, it turns into cellular ash. 